Hey y'all, it's me Rodney. Hey guys, it's me Missy. And it's Tuesday and we're live and I'm excited because I've got new decoupage paper and I'm going to show you what we're working on tonight because we do not have any new items to show you. Um, our last haul was kind of really big and we're still working through it and putting it out and all that good stuff. So um, it's been a crazy week. We've been yep. busy. Yep. It's a fun time. So let me show you what we're going to do tonight. Okay. So I made this little basket out of just some drop cloth and I decoupaged on the front of it. This is the, well, it's the bunny paper that's online, yeah. right? Yeah. This, yeah. yeah. So this paper is available on our website, but I used it on this little basket or made it like a, I guess you could call it a basket, just like a little bag. I just, um, it's yeah, a it no looks like a little tote bag. To yeah. Make. It's a no sew. I didn't sew this. I used a hot glue gun and. Um, made the bag and then I decoupaged the um, paper on the front of the bag and then I stuffed it full. Here's what I'm missing tonight is um, I thought I had some of that foam stuff that you can stick florals in and make the florals stay where you yep. want them to. Um, I don't have it here. Apparently it's at the store and I thought I had it here. Blah, blah, blah. But if I could have had that, I would have made my floral arrangement better. But you get the gist of what I'm doing. It looks I'm, good I'm right now, like it, it looks wild and misshapen. Yeah, it is like wild flowers in a little sack, is what I like about it. Like a little flower sack or something like that, but it's got the little bunny paper on it. So I think it's really cute for spring. And then I used the um, bendable jute as like a little handle. So you could do it a bunch of different ways, I think. Yeah. But this is what we're working with tonight. Um, and I'm super excited about it. So we're going to be making one of these tonight, but we're also going to be doing another decoupage. Um, I gotta, I'm kind of going to go back and forth because I do have a frame here that I want to put an image in that doesn't have a glass. It's just a blank frame right. um, that I want to paint up and put it in there. But we're still going to do the decoupage because um, I did this just playing around. Because everybody was asking, can you put your decoupage paper on fabrics? Right, so I did this just laying around um and this is just a piece of drop cloth and then i decoupaged the um and we abused the mess out of it we oh, rolled yeah. it up I we mean, folded it we, it's like and then it just comes right back so you like it just has like an old yeah. scroll feel to it it's, it's um, so cool a lot of fun um so i think that i thought well this would be really cute in a frame is which i did have this one in a frame um, but we're going to do a different one tonight in the frame because what do we have tonight? We have new decoupage yep, of the March, month paper. Decoupage of the month papers yes. for March are here. March papers. So It wanna... took me longer to get ready than I anticipated. I wanted to show them last week, but I couldn't get them done. I'm excited about them. So I'm going to go ahead and show these to you. Um, so if you want to sign up and get these papers and get papers every month, um, you can do that yep. on... Um, I'll put it on. You'll do that. Okay. So, and it's 18... 18.95. 18 you get five sheets and we mail them out to you every month. This is March, um, March's papers. This is kind of a farmhouse theme. So if you love farmhouse, these are definitely papers for you. This is just a chicken on top of print. I thought, are you on this one? Yeah. Are you on I'm okay. on that one. Okay. So I thought that was, I love that. I love the black and white. Um, I love these cows with the scroll. I think this would be really pretty. It looks like a money. <laughs> yeah. Money I think that cows. would be really pretty in a frame. And then I love these guys. I thought they were really cute. And then this one has two images on it. So while you get five papers, you actually get like a bonus because these are smaller. So if you have a smaller craft to do these on, you get sheep here and then the cows yep, they're, on the newsprint. And they're roughly a five and a half by almost eight inches. I like this one because it has just a touch of green to it in the papers. Yes, like that. that bottom one does. Mm -hmm. But I thought, but I love both of these. I was excited about that. And then these are just chickens on top of music notes because if you own chickens, you know chickens are very, um, well, all of the chickens we've ever owned are very talkative. talkative. Yeah, they're very talkative. <laughs> very talkative girls. So, um, but these would be fun. I think that you could separate them and um, do some 
pretty stuff for that for sure. All right. Jay Matthew said he's first, Jay obviously. Was first. Yes. Tina said good evening, everyone. Tina Hi. Montville. Hi, Tina. Donna Noble said hello from Missouri. Hi, Miss Donna. Karen said hey, all. Hi. Natalie said good evening, Rodney, Missy, and the Rusty Kids. Rusty Kids, yes, yes. Judy yes. said good evening, everyone from New Mexico. And Karen said, love the small sizes. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to get back into making. Uh, we need some smaller ones. We need smaller yeah. ones because everything's not bigger. And my problem is I want to make everything like these two chickens right here. Right. Which sometimes that's not what you want. Sometimes what you want is this one. Yeah, yeah. So Miss Missy uh, squared me away yesterday. I didn't square. <laughs> you make it sound bad. Because I had like ten of them, and she so she chose those designs. I'm like, I just need something smaller. And but she, and she needed me to change the background out on this one, so I did that. And then there, there we go. I can, out of all of these, I think my favorite is probably going to be these three right here because of the green that's in it. But I also love the sheep. I love this chicken, and I do love. I love them all, so I don't know which one's my favorite because I just said that. This one, this one, and this one, yeah. and this one, and this one's my favorite. Yeah. This one is probably my favorite. I might do this one tonight on a sack. I might do the sheep. I don't know because we are in the Easter spring mode, so I thought that would be really good. I think these, um, if you're a primitive style or farmhouse, you know, anything like that, I think these would be a lot of fun to use on different things for sure. So And, and last month was really colorful, so this month is kind of toning it down. Toning some. it down with some uh, black and white with some a little bit of tans mixed yeah. in. So again, these are March's decoupage of the month papers. Um, I put a link in the uh, chat and there's a link in the description just in case you're interested. Jay said I like the cows, but you know I like the I like the chickens. Oh yeah. The chickens are good too. I like them both. I do. I really like. He them likes all. a thick chicken. Yeah. <laughs> well, like the Rodney, Dan not Rodney Dangerfield. What was that guy's name? The comedian. I can't remember. His name. I can't remember. Never mind. Either. I I'm gonna go from one of these. Um, so what I'm gonna start with is um, we're gonna start making a sack. So I'm I was going with this one because this fabric was already cut, so it's kind of the perfect size. So if you do go to make um, this project, make sure that your fabric is big enough to glue um, or sew if you're going to sew, but make sure it's big enough that your image will, you know, fit on it or whatever. Oh, and I got Missy this after y'all suggested it. I yeah, got it. That's my new toy. Yeah. So that's what we're going to use. Tina said, I like the cows as well. Medium rare. <laughs> Medium for me. Yeah. Um, and then the next, while we're working on the Mod Podge and doing this, and this is drying because it does take a little bit longer to dry because it is on cloth. And I will give you some tips. I might not be able to pull it all through tonight because, again, this takes a little bit longer to dry. Is I would use your iron um, to, after it's completely dry, I would just use your iron to iron on, you know, make sure that your image is on iron, there. On yeah, there. on there, on there. Um, and that there, Hi, because, Sharon. How are you doing today? because there's fabric and it moves and that kind of stuff so after it's completely dry it doesn't hurt to lay a piece of parchment paper down and just take your iron and go over it just to make sure that it's all nice and sealed up um as far as like being the finishing up but like i said it this takes a little bit longer to dry it probably will not be dry tonight um They'll get the gist yeah, of it. you'll get the gist of it because that's what that is. Yeah, so and it stiffens up the Mod Podge stiffens up the bag. It makes it easier to hold. Um, I did stuff my bag, and it does have a weight in the bottom of it, so that way it can be stand up on its own. But I just thought it was really cute. And for anybody new, it's a no sew project. It's a no sew project. Yeah, because I do not sew. Even though she does have a machine. All I want to do is just make a little bag, so we're just going to do it the easy way. Um, the other thing we're going to work on is the frame, and we're going to um, decoupage on the fabric, and then we're going to put it in the frame, so I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So, let's start with this. So, this is just my fabric, and I just got it cut, and then once this thing right here turns green, I'll be able to hot glue it, and I've got my hot glue in the thing oh yeah it doesn't take long for that to heat up no it either. doesn't and all i hey, did hi may may 
all I did was, and on for this project, you know, I didn't even, um, have you, the green light's not on yet. Oh, well, oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. I, I, I think it's it my looked, glue it, it looked like it was red. I think it's my glue stick. I just got this gun and I did use it. I'm clumping it. There, there it goes. You go. It wasn't all the way in. That makes sense. I didn't, um, what I was saying was, okay, like I didn't paint the drop cloth white before I put my decoupage image on it. Um, but I, you can if you want to. Tina just came up with a great idea. What I think that said. bag would be perfect as an Easter basket. It would be. I think th that's kind of like what I was thinking about. When I did that one with the Easter Bunny, but then like tonight I'm going to do this little farmhouse because I think it would be cute. Um, I got hot glue on my finger. Um, yeah, I didn't get her the gloves. I totally, I totally dropped the ball on that. I didn't get her the gloves. It didn't burn me. I just had it. It was just glued to my finger. It burned me last night. Yeah. When I was playing with it. So, and we're going to do this side. If you guys are looking for a cordless gun they make them for all different batteries so if you have a it, like for me it's dewalt i have dewalt tools they, they make them for those if you got milwaukee they make them for those just uh they make a various assortment of cordless hot glue guns if you had like um a covered porch need some highland cows moo oh yeah highland cows I don't know nothing about cows. I just know I think those, those are jerseys. Yeah, the ones that have those big giant horns, you know. They're really popular. Like that fuzzy headed one that used to live across the from us. Remember that? Yeah. Remember how we walked out there that one day and all them cows were out in our yard? Yes. Huge cows. I'm going, hey, get back in the house. Yeah, they were all just walking around in our yard. We woke up and lived on a farm all of a sudden. Yeah. It was fun. That Kids one, liked that it. That was fun. Yeah, they yeah. did like it. They did. That one it. cow was as big as a truck, though. Yeah. that And there was, was that one time that they got out of the fence in the middle of the night, and then somebody knocked on our door. It was like 1, 2 o'clock in the yeah, morning. Yeah, I remember that. And it was because they were like, hey, those cows are out. Are those your cows? They're no. not our cows. Goodness gracious, if I can't get my hands out of it. If those were our cows, they'd be some uh, raw beef. Raw beef. They'd be in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> we say that. We had all them chickens and none of them made it to the none freezer. None of them made it to the freezer. So then I just flipped it out and then pushed my corners. And now I got this little bag. And then my little image will go on it. So now I just have to decide... I think the three cows look you the think coolest. That, yeah. I see. I like the, the sheep, sheep too, looks, though. The sheep looks good on it, too. At least it wasn't a six-foot snake that happened to my cousin in Yuma, <gasps> Arizona. Are you serious? Yeah, the only six-foot snake we had was the uh, that one in the uh, shed. I did my it was a, uh, golly, what was that thing called? Chicken snake. Oh, chicken yeah. Snake. What do you call a cow with no legs? Ground beef. Ground beef. Guess who asked that? Jay. You're cutting a carrier paper. It's fine. So I'm just going to... I think I'm going to go with the so sheep. So you're going with the sheep. I'm going to go with the Look sheep. She says you're going with the cows at first, and now she's going to the... I know, but I feel like because, you know... I yeah, could, I mean, yeah. May, May, weren't you at the house when that happened? That was another time that those snakes were out there. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. That, those are the when Mei Mei was here. It wasn't that big, but there were several snakes that day. Um, you can tear it with water, but you know I don't have water with me, so I'm just gonna use my fingers to pinch it. Um, yeah. Yeah, she said, "Yeah, I was there." Yeah, she <laughs> saw the snakes, but that's not the only time that we've found snakes in that in that that uh, building. Tina said, "Yes, it's two sided. Use them both." You actually could. That, I thought about that this morning. When I did that, I was like, you know what? I could put this on the other side. <laughs> ah, make it multi. Flip it out. 
But I think these would make really cute Easter baskets. I think that they would be cute um, if you have like those coat racks, those expandable coat rack things yes. that hang up. I think that they would, one would be cute hanging on that and you could put like, like linens in Like in Chastity's booth. Um, yeah, you could put linens in it or something like that. Or you Oh my could gosh, you could make a couple of them to sell in the store, mm -hmm. Get, cha get buy that thing out of Chastity's booth and put it on that. I have one in my booth already that's, um, that I use to hang up coffee cups on. Oh, yeah, you're right. I do have one, yeah. You do. To, and I hang coffee cups on it because it's really useful for that. So I'm tearing the edges that way it's softer on the drop pod. Yeah, the time May May was here was when uh, Brandon's wife mm -hmm. they was came out going there. down there to get them. Um, in this house, we don't like snakes, so... Those were allowed to live that day. Yeah, we... Now, the ones... I was going to catch and release that one that was in the shed that day when I went down there, and he was huge. And I reached up to grab him, and I saw the second one. I was like, oh, go get the pellet rifle. Yeah. I got bit by a rattle-headed copper moccasin once after three days of horrible pain, and the snake died. Uh, Jay. Jay. There's... Um, the, <laughs> he said, a rattle-headed copper moccasin. Oh, that's all the snakes Now you, Now you got it. She thought yeah. you got really got bit by a snake. Yeah. All and right, May I'm May gonna... said the snake whisperer. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon's, Brandon's wife is the snake whisperer. Yeah. Aunt Lynn, if you're watching, <laughs> she's, she's the snake whisperer. Brandon's wife. Yeah. We don't like snakes here either, Donna said. No, I don't do snakes. I don't like spider snakes and since I moved to Alabama cockroaches. Yeah, I wouldn't like cockroaches yeah, either. I'm not a big fan of that either. Cockroaches, water bugs. I probably should have glued this part down first, but you know. Hindsight's 2020. Wait. 2024. 2024, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Just so that way my edges look finished. Now, Jay's birthday is coming up March the 1st, y'all. That's right. Happy birthday, So that'll be this Jay. Friday. Don't let me forget. Happy birthday, Jay. Yeah. So, what are you doing I'm right just now? I'm putting the edges down. So, you just use your finger to mash yeah, it? Yeah, I was just using my finger. Because I probably should have done that before I glued my sides down. But, like I said. <laughs> he said, row tide, thanks. Row tide. So there we go, there we go, there we go. That way my little pouch looks finished. And then I could add a handle to it. And again, the best not. thing is, you don't have to sew it. You don't have to sew it. That's always a plus for me. It's a plus for me. Um, a tip what I would do is take your parchment paper and lay it in between your... what do you do that for okay lay your parchment paper in between your sack and so inside so that way when you apply the mod podge it doesn't go all the way it doesn't seep through to the other side because you're only wanting to get this side on there and tina montville said my youngest granddaughter's birthday is today she is 13 happy birthday happy birthday 13. officially a teenager a teenager so I'm just going to pour Mod Podge into this fancy French bowl. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah. It's fancy. This fancy bowl made in France. This fancy France bowl. When was it made? I don't know. Um, and I'm going to figure out where I want my image. So about right there. So then I'm just going to take the Mod Podge and just paint it onto the fabric. Now, um, if you're wanting your image to be very <laughs> bright and vibrant, vibrant, you can put a coat of white paint here. Let it dry and then come through and Mod Podge if that's what you want to do. But 
Um, for these papers, I feel like this is okay. Let me get that string. Um, out of the fancy Mod Podge container? Out of the fan, yeah. Into my French bowl. Yeah, she can't use her big Mod Podge container anymore. It's so contaminated with dried Mod Podge and broken pieces of uh, it, it happens. bristles. It happens. Then I'm going to place my image where I want it to go. Firmly press it down to see. So, I mean, it'll dry a little bit darker, but not by much. Good evening, Tamitha. How are you doing Hi, tonight? Hi, Tamitha. Oh. And this is why I say... Can you just do the iron-on technique with the fabric? Uh, I think you could. I mean, initially you would be doing the same thing, I think, is you would be painting your Maj Podge onto the, the fabric, and right. then you would need to let it dry. So right. that's going to take longer because you have to let it dry before you iron. But this, I like doing it this way because I'm sealing up my paper, right? So you're gluing it down and sealing it up. I'm gluing the same. it down and sealing it up. But in the end, when it's all said and done, and I don't have Mod Podge. Tam says she's doing great. Good, good, good. Um, it doesn't hurt to, after it's nice and dry and all glued on, it doesn't hurt to take the iron and just go over it just to make sure that there's no um, air pockets or anything and that it's just glued down. Yeah, because you, if you iron That's, it. That one's you, ironed on. If you iron it, you get this result, which is amazing. Sorry. I, I did the same thing. Like I, I can bend it, I can fold it, I can roll it up. Yeah. And I was really surprised. When Missy showed this to me last night, I was like, holy cow, that's amazing. I did the same thing as I'm doing right now, is I put a layer of Mod Podge on the uh, cloth, and then I went through and put a layer of Mod Podge on the top of it. And then after that was completely dry, I just took my little iron, and I w ironed on it, and then that was it. That was all I did. And then that was that whole piece. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing. I was really stunned. So you're going to want to keep your wax paper in there. Just, that just keeps it from sealing down to the other one. And I kind of just like to lift it a little bit so that that way air can get into it. But then you just let it, because like right there, there's like an air bubble. But it's just because of the fabric. That's where the iron will take care of um, smoothing that out. So that that's that. So we're just so going we to let it that to the dry. Side. And then the other thing we have, so like I have, I always come across frames that have no glass and no back, no glass, no back. So then it's like you can paint them and then try to sell them as they are, or you could try to put an image in it. But here's, I don't like putting an image in a frame that doesn't have a glass because then it's not protected. Right. Um, so I was like, when I did this, I was like, I wonder if this will fit these frames and they do. And I thought that that was really pretty. And then this is sealed up, so it's okay. But I'm not going to use that one. Heck no, because I've rolled this one up a billion times yeah. already. Lisa Green said that looks it. great. So, let's see. Which one do I want to use? Thank you. Thank you. I think I'm going to do... Do I want to do the cow one? Which way does the frame hang? The frame can hang either oh. which way. It's just a basic. It's just waiting on me to put the yeah, hardware on it. Yeah, it's just a frame it. that needs hardware. So there's a chicken and there's a cow and then there's the money cow. Money cows. You want the money cows? Hold cow? on, guys. Which ones do y'all want in the frame? Money cows? Regular cows? Either way, it'll look good. Here's regular cows. There's chicken. And I don't like double chickens for that well, the project. the double chickens aren't going to work out, yeah. Um, I vote money cow. Vote That's money. what I vote. Money cow. Money all the way, Tina said. Let's do the money cow then. So, first I'm going to do is paint this Jay one. said regular bovines, please. <laughs> Lisa, Lisa said money cows. Money cows. I'm doing it. I'm doing money cows. So my frame has just been cleaned up really good and stuff like that. And what I'm just using drop cloths because it's just a basic color. Moody cows, Tamitha said. Cows. And we're just gonna 
throw some paint on here. Like my sound effects. Mooney cows. Missy, who's yeah. been cutting your hair lately? Who asked that? Uh, Tina asked May May who's cutting her hair, and May May said, I'm in between stylists. I'm doing it myself lately. Missy has someone, though. Um, I use the barbershop right down from the store, and I use Elizabeth. Um, she cuts my hair. She's really good. Um, and then I cut my hair short this go around so uh you know how like if it's not done right it can get stringy well uh, my i have a part my i have a side part um and sometimes uh they don't certain hairstylists do, don't part your hair down the center and cut it right and so i get like um all these uneven strings everywhere but elizabeth does a really good job she parts my hair the right way and cuts it and i have no uneven string, like no e uneven hair on either side, so I'm really happy. When Missy reviews this afterwards, she's not going to be happy with what I just did. Why? What did you just do? <laughs> what did you just do? I zoomed in on you while oh you are talking gosh. about your hair. You were flipping it like this, like strings here. Strings here and strings there. Uh, maybe knows what I'm talking about. So, but yeah, it's the barber shop. Literally, it's a barber shop. It's same not, place I go to get my hair cut. Yeah, it's the same place. It's not a salon. Salon. It's just a barber shop. <laughs> but I like them, Tina. I like Elizabeth. So maybe you'll, you know, if you're looking. I don't like telling people where to go get their hair cut. That's a lot of pressure. It is a lot of pressure because what if it doesn't turn out right? And then it feels like it's my fault. Um, but that's where I go. Tina said, thank you, Missy. I will call her. I need to get my hair cut before my trip. Where are you going? Where's she going? I don't know. <laughs> where are you going? Elizabeth <laughs> cuts my hair most of the time, too. But yeah. all the ladies there do a good job on mine because I just get a high fade with no guard. Simple. Actually, it's not that simple. I've learned that. I should have picked the other friend. She's going to England. Ooh. Where's Emily at to give us her voice? I know. I'm going to tell her. We'll tell Emily. So, then we'll, we'll hear the, the accent. Yeah, she'll, <laughs> she'll, she'll bust out the accent She'll immediately for us. start talking in the accent. That's exciting. That's really cool. That's where Cammie's from. Cammie is from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. <laughs> Don't let Missy fool you. Her original heritage may be from there. That's where Cammie's from. Lorna said, when you find a good hairdresser, you stick to them. Yeah. The hairdresser that I had, um, she's doing the mom thing. Um, me and Emily used her a lot. She's doing the mom thing, and she had babies, so she's doing that. And then, <laughs> oh, bless you. But I'm not very consistent on getting my hair cut. Like, I'll go get my hair cut. <laughs> Bless you. And then it'll be an easy three to six months later when I go get another one. Thank you, Tina. So I'm not very... Thank you, Tam. Jay said, can't me and Cameron are kinfolk because he's from T-Town, too. Ah. Tina says she's going to see her older son and her, and her and her granddaughters. Nice, nice. And Lorna's got a uh, a uh, corgi badge beside her name. Isn't that so cool? <laughs> That's so cool. It took us forever to figure out what we were going to do with the badges and stuff. So I should have got a different frame. So we picked corgis because Cammy is always in same, every single video. It seems like I picked the most complicated frame to do tonight. I just wanted to just paint it white, so that way it would look good with the decoupage paper. I think it would look good without it. No. No, 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 no. That's me, though. I'm not picky, guys. I don't have to paint a frame to make it look good. I just close my eyes. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Yeah. Who's at this design? Yeah, it's a mess. It's a mess. And you made a mess out of the counter? I did. 
And it dropped glue on the floor. I picked up the And we didn't miss thing. any of that because it was all in main can. Oh, I picked up the um, hardest cancel. The hardest frame. That's okay. That's okay. You're going to have to put two coats on it? Probably. Lisa said, I'm in Tennessee and my daughter's a hairdresser. She's the only one that touches my hair. No, oh, you the same. Yeah, I used to go to the same person constantly, too, Jordan. Mm-hmm. I think she's in Mapleville now. I think so, too. All right. The frame has stressed me out, but whatever. What did I say I was doing? The money cow. <laughs> frame stressed her frame out. Frame stressed me out. Should have picked a different one, but Whatever. Okay, so there's my drop cloth that I had already cut. So I'm just going to um, get my decoupage paper ready. Looking good. And we're just going to yeah, do... I like that. I like the money cows. They look cool. We're just going to do the same thing. I'm not going to paint the white. I'm not going to paint it white. I'm just going to... Do the same thing. I don't think you, you shouldn't really have to. I don't think you have to. Because the bunnies turned out really good. I really don't want this paintbrush to. There we go. Not get on my other papers. And your uh, sheep is still drying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I said, it takes a minute for the sheep to dry. Um, so I'm just going to, because I, I don't have any water, a cup of water with me. I'm just going to use my fingers and I'm just going to pinch it and I'm not wanting it to be um, hard. I want it to have the soft lines. So you know what it could almost look like? I think like like an oil painting or some, like a painting. You know what I'm saying? Like a vintage oil painting on the drop cloth. Like it would be a canvas and then it's in the frame. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's what I'm going for. It makes sense to me. Do you attach the rice paper to the copy paper? Uh, we attach our rice paper to carrier sheets. Yeah. They just cut. Because if you don't, a printer ain't going to pick it up. It's too thin. Too thin. We used to have, we used to, have to try to feed it through a uh, f top loader, but we started printing on the uh, untextured side. And it will not pull it at all. So we have to leave enough carrier for it to be able to pull it carrier through. Carrier paper, and then we got to cut it. Cut it, cut it, cut it. Cut what? Cut all the papers. Oh, yeah. First, we cut it from rolls. Yeah. So as I was saying, though, like, that's just, we just left those on, the carrier paper. I didn't take them off. You see a thick strand there? Yeah, see it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You might want to use some scissors. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to cut it because it's thick. I don't want it. There we go. It's slightly thicker than copy paper, Tina, and it allows us to put adhesives on it that are light enough not to mess up the decoupage paper. Right. But heavy enough that it won't come off when it's running through the machine that the machine will pick it up. <laughs> what have I missed? A friend rudely called me during the live roll. <laughs> That's what Karen said. <laughs> so rude. So rude. How dare you. Okay, so what we're doing is we're decoupaging on top of a drop cloth. So I got two projects going tonight. I'm doing this frame. Um, I'm putting this in a frame. And then I made a little sack out of drop cloth and um, we decoupage on top of it and then we're going to make it into a little basket. Oh, look at my new ring. Yeah. Can show, they see it? Yeah, show it up there. <laughs> look at my new ring that I got from Rusty Grillix today. <laughs> it's moonstone. It's a rainbow, rainbow moonstone. It's kind of blurry. Is it? Yeah. It's so pretty. I forgot that I had Maybe it Maybe come over to the main cam here. I'll zoom in for you. That way you can be proud of it. There you go. That's what she got at the old store today. That's why I got a Rusty Grillix today. We do not, Tina. We do not carry the 
that paper. Um, trying to make sure. Uh, Tina said, beautiful, love that ring. Karen yeah. said, that's so cool. Yeah. Sometimes I get lucky like that. And I and catch it before it goes to the she register. She catches it before it goes to the register. And I've been in the office final because finalizing our uh, LLC stuff yeah. for our taxes and uh, the. Uh, I just so happened to catch that joker. Yeah, so that's how that went down. Yeah. I couldn't get a 1099K. To, I, we didn't get our 1099K from the credit card processor until. Wednesday, or no, Thursday of last week. So, yeah, so now I'm in this rush to get everything done. Because I always wait till I get everything before I start the process. This has been a fun week. <laughs> All right, and I'm to plug a Mod Podge. And I just got a piece of cardboard behind me. Um, so that way. Tina, I'm you not... should be able to just get it off of Amazon. It's going to be, like I said, it's a thicker, it's just thick, it's just thicker. That's the only difference between it and copy paper. Copy paper is thin and cheap to make, and the stuff that we use to carry the rice paper is just thicker. So that way I'm not gluing down to my counter. That is cool. I feel like you probably go through uh, more, more Mod Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I bet you do. Because the uh, paper is just, uh, the cloth is just like absorbing it. And the same thing for this, like after it's all nice and dry and everything, um, it just doesn't hurt to take the iron and go over it just so that way you can make sure that your decoupage paper is securely um, glued down to the drop cloth. Because like if you were painting, if you were putting it um, directly on a piece of wood or anything like that, it actually, you know, it's not absorbing the drop cloth. So, so, so that way, so like there's working time where I feel like on this one, it's not so much working time um, because the drop cloth is absorbing some of the. Um, That's what gives it its. Right. Uh, not flexibility, but it's flexible, yet it's stiff. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried to put gesso under the Mod Podge? You know, I haven't, and I've played with that before, but I didn't even really think about that. That was from Karen. Yeah. Sharon said, Karen, you should have told your friend what she's doing calling you now. Your friend should be watching Rodney and Missy. <laughs> Karen said, right? <laughs> That's funny. They are funny. So I'm just going to apply the Mod Podge. I'm still, I'm still amazed at how this turned out. I really am. I was, I'm shocked. I was stunned. You're funny. Well, I was working on those papers, so I had no idea you were even doing this. Just gluing it down. But the good thing about this time is I had no mess-up papers. So that's a good thing and kind of a bad thing because it doesn't give you any extra papers to yeah, work with. Yeah, that's like the bunny. Now, how are you going to show off the... How are you going to show the, mod, the March Decoupage Month Club stuff now? I, I guess I have to I only printed the prototypes. You're going to have to print me some more, I guess. <laughs> So if anybody missed it, just watch the very beginning of the video. We showed the, the March decoupage of the month papers. Okay, so this is where I say the iron on because it does move. See how it moves? Because the fabric moves and everything. But you get this on there. Let it dry. Let it dry. And, and then iron it. it. So let me see this. It's drier. If you will give me two seconds, I can um, heat gun that. You can heat gun that and it'll drop just It'll help fine. up dry faster. Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. Last time I heat gunned some Mod Podge, it blistered. That's you. Give me two seconds. Two seconds. She wants two seconds. Two 
Uh, that yes, Karen, that's one of them. Tina said you have five seconds. The sheep with this cow is another one. It's on one sheet. Sheep's and the cow. They're roughly uh, five and a half by eight inches. What else? Uh, there's these cows, the money cows. I, th to me, that's what it looks like, money cows. That's what I was picturing when it was all coming together. And since Missy approved the design, it turned out good, I guess. Uh, there's these cows. There's this chicken. And there's these two chickens. And this one's kind of so you can put some water there and tear in between them. Uh, I had to go back and final do this design. First, I had the first chicken on there twice, and then Missy said I needed to do a second chicken. So that's how we got this guy. And then uh, she didn't like the background, so I ended up changing the background. So we got that done. But yeah, I plan on doing some more of the double uh, designs here in the future because not everything needs to be huge. Although I would like for everything to be huge, but Missy pointed out the, the flaws in that. So it's drier. It's dry enough for me to work with because what I, I did was just shoot it inside the bag so that way I could, you know, work with it. If we call seahorses seahorses, then why don't we call regular horses land horses? I don't know. Greg, <laughs> Karen said that's a great size. Uh, she also said, I'm excited to get them. And Donna Noble said, I missed the first part because my daughter showed up to pick, my, pick up my grandson. <laughs> but All yeah, right. so the papers are pretty cool this month, yeah. I think. Because we're going with the animal thing because spring is in full swing. Full swing. So you, which camera you got me on? Oh, I got you on whichever one you want to show them off on. Right, I'll show put the you papers? On the thing. Now you're on the front. Yeah. All right, so there's my little sack, right? All right. So it needs something heavy in the bottom of it. So, like, you know, you could do, which could be anything. For me, it could be paint containers. But <laughs> it needs something heavy. Like, if you're wanting it to just sit, you know, on the counter, you need to put something heavy in it so that way it'll sit. And then what I did was I just took the bendable twine. So you could do it. Um, I kind of went that way on the first one so it could hang like that. Yeah. But you could easily go side to side. Little loops. That would be neat. Yeah. And do it on the inside make it look better. The smaller size is nice. I could run out of room for bigger pieces. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. Missy was pointing out. So in the next upcoming decoupage right. papers, it'll still have one one large background like the chickens did. And then I'll start putting my design elements in there where there's two, maybe three on a page if I can get three different designs on a page. Right. But the, it'll have one continuous background. Oh, no. So it takes a little bit more time because some of them, some of the way I do things, I'll have to edit out backgrounds, and that takes a few minutes. You would think that the, all this AI smart background remover technology could do it, but no, it, it, it can't distinguish when there's not a hard line for it to pick from. Like on these cows, for example, there's no, it can't distinguish the background from the foreground so it can't remove anything it'll just give me an error so i have to do all that manually when i do that he's not open it and that's the importance of using layers so if you design your own stuff put everything on a layer do not flatten the image and a corral flattening an image is pretty simple and it's if you save it's an undoable operation I'm going to do it like this, and then I'm going to do one on the other side. So it'll be double handled. Two hand. Oh, okay. Two yeah. handles. Two double handles. handles. Yeah. Karen, it is actually 
that's what took so long on getting this month's out was uh actually designing them and then we changed the the backgrounds on a couple of them i had a like a pencil up here i thought you did it's over there beside that frame on the right hand side of the picture frame oh good eye good eye now i'm sure there's a tool for this and i'm sure that um you know there's a tool there's yeah and i don't know where it's at we the, don't have one no that puncher thing that we had for punching cloth you think it would punch cloth no that one it's a single hole punch for paper it barely yeah. cuts paper wow you have to get one of those fancy ones from may may you know what i want to see what i want to see if i can run a piece of paper through the embossing machine the rice paper through the embossing machine karen said nice glue gun missy aren't they nice yeah there's no cord <laughs> There's, There's no, no cord. cord to fight. And I can just throw my Dewalt battery on the charger afterwards. Yeah. I did not bring home one of my big batteries for her, so she's only stuck she's stuck with the uh small two amp hour but one. It, but it should work. I mean, I don't really have it on for that long. I spoil you. Aww. <laughs> That's what that is. I spoil you. Yeah, I oh yeah. Not really. I got a ring and a hot glue gun. Uh, and she got I, Hoka shoes today. Yeah, I did get some new tennis shoes. So, if I can do this without my fingers locking up on me, I'm just going to kind of tie this in a She knot. said, get you a crop -a doll Lisa said, get you a crop -a doll to punch holes with. That's what I need. Instead of that little Instead of a lead school pencil? one. No, that little junk one that we got that won't even punch paper half the time. Oh, yeah. So then I'm going to punch it through there. And then come through and do the other side. <laughs> Karen said, as you should, Rodney. Spoil you. Yeah. yeah. Better get me something good on my birthday, Jay said. She already did. My birthday present came early. It's birthday month in our house. Yeah, it is. Mine, Emily's. Yeah. Tina said May May has them at, the, at her store. What's the, it called uh, again? The crop -a dial Yeah, it's the dial crop thing. And then yeah. what we have? I have no clue. Uh, no, the one I got... That she get that I got from her does the uh oh maybe it is. I bet it would punch that. I totally forgot we had that. Yeah. Cause I got it to punch uh plastic bags so I could put holes in the uh -huh. bags. And it worked that, like a dream for that. Yeah, I bet it's at the store then if we were punching bags with it. No, not those bags. We punched oh. the clear contain the clear cellophane bags that I couldn't punch. That's, That's the saying. whole reason we went over the, there was. I was saying, I bet it's at the store. I bet we took it to the store. Is it the? It, that's the one that's got the handle, right? And then the half moon design. I bet it is. Lorna said, "Crocodiles are very sturdy." I bet it's better than his pencil. <laughs> yeah, you're letting that pencil. You're letting that whoopie. That's you twice today. Yep, yeah, that's the one we got. Yeah. Susie and Lisa said, Karen said, Miss, you just need some clear tape. Yeah. I'm trying to be fancy over here. If you use regular twine, you wouldn't be fighting with it as bad. Yeah, but I need the wire. But the, the whole thing with it de-raveling like that, you could probably avoid that by putting some glue on it before you cut it. Then I have to wait for it to do that. Not if you use super glue. Super glue will dry instantly. And I'm just gonna cut. So yeah, yeah so everybody's in agreement. Crop a dial, and that is the tool that we have. I just, I think it's over there actually, by that cutter. Over there at the store. 
where everything always is. But see, see I want the or stitch out five. The um, twine to be um, raveled. So I'm just cutting, pushing back the twine and cutting the wire so that way it doesn't poke anybody. And then I'll just cut that so it's even. And not cut my fingers off. See? See how it's like that? Yeah, it's cute. Yeah. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Karen said the crocodile will set eyelets too. Yeah, that's the thing that we have then. I didn't know what said eyelets. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking then. I think we did know that though. Maybe I just I got I just got to us. punch holes. That's what I got it yeah. for. Yeah, it's punch holes in plastic. Yeah. Hot, hot glue it. That's so funny. Cute yeah, enough. stitching it would have worked too. There we go. So in hindsight, guys, if you glue the ends before you make your cut, it will not. Don't say it too fast because I'm just going to struggle with this one. I said before you cut. It's like the rope thing. Whip your rope before you cut it, but whip it on both sides of the rope. That way, it doesn't fray loose when you cut your rope. One thing is, if I could, if it was, um... there we go. So I'm trying to make sure my handles are even. I'm gonna tie it. I don't know how you tie some metal. Just making a knot. My chair is making all kinds of noises every time I move. They're probably like, wow, what's wrong with him? I hope he's taking medicine for that. <laughs> oh, nut. Ugh. This project's so easy. No, nobody said it'd be easy. <laughs> if you wasn't adding, if you, if he's doing like he did last night with the bunnies before you added handles to it, the handles is the hard part. Yeah, the handles is. The hard part, I think. But it's because I'm using the wired. All right, I'm not going to fool with that side no more. It's a purse. Hold on, let me move the main camera. Yep, it, it's a purse. It's just the cutest little bag. Then you can open it up. And do what with it? You can stuff it with stuffing. Here's a rag. Stuff this rag in. I have some, I have this stuff right here. Karen says, so cute. Somebody's throwing hearts everywhere. Aww. Hearts. Hearting, hearting, hearting. I'm gonna stuff it with rustic, right. hunter, rustic, hunter. rustic relic bags. <laughs> Cause I don't have my thing. Ah, Lorna said, if you have the one with the half moon top, it only punches holes. The one that looks like pliers will set eyelets. Oh. Yeah, the one we have look, ha, is the half moon at the very top. It's got big grip handles. Which you, I don't ever have to use it that way. I just. So it'd be like that. And then let me steal this greenery out of here. Oh. Lisa said, love it. You did an awesome job. Thank you. Wow, the frame's still sitting over there looking like a ragamuffin. Well, yeah, the frame is looking like a ragamuffin. Should have just stuck with one project tonight. Yeah, probably should have. <sighs> Whatever. We tend to overdo things sometimes. How's it look? Well, if I had the right more stuffing in it, I need more stuffing, but... And the different greenery. This greenery is huge. I got the stem all over it, bent it. Bent your, your base isn't as fat as your base is. No, that it's not. Yeah, that one's not going to stand up, but it could be a wall hanging it one. It could definitely be a wall hanging one. And then put some more flowers in there. Just fill it up a little bit more. I'm trying to see it, make sure I got it right. 
Jay said two toe thumbs up. I think it's cute. I just like them. They just look like little, little primitive bags. Little cute little. Get that. You should have made it bigger like the bunny. Well, that I was using the paper. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so. But it would be cute hanging up on one of those little racks or something like that, a hook or whatever. Yeah. With some small greenery. The mm -hmm. greenery some, you're trying to put in was too the big, The greenery think. that I have You right still need there. to iron it down, too. Yeah, it needs to be ironed down. Um, but I like how it, the paper um, already has the texture and then it grabs the fabric. So it just makes it look like it's supposed to be on there. And I think that it... Um, the edges blend really nice into the paper, um, into the texture of the deco of the drop cloth, is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then once it's nice and ironed out, um, it'll be securely on there really good. So, I would have never thought of decoupage and drop cloth, Lisa said. We didn't either. Somebody asked us last week, right? Or was it two weeks um, ago? It's been a minute. I think somebody asked if it would decoupage if, on top it, yep. of fabric. And so I always have drop cloth, so that's how I ended up with this. That's how we ended up doing book, um, the books, yeah. too, because somebody asked. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, we don't know. Let's check. Let's do proof of yeah. concept. So it just worked out really good. I think it's cute, and I think that you could do all kinds of little things like this. I think, like Tina said, the Easter, like the bunnies and stuff. Yeah, like that larger one. Yeah. Oh, hot, hot. You okay? Yeah. It's hot. It's still on. Yeah. I'm going to turn that off, actually. Do you need it for your other thing? No, I don't think so, but I can turn it back on. So, I think the little bag, the handle, and the greenery, which I stole some of that other greenery. I think it looks cute. Can you see both of them? Hey, Nancy, how are you doing tonight? Hi, Miss Nancy. Yeah, you can see both of them just fine. I think these would make cute little Easter baskets or gift baskets. Tina, so we'll keep coming up with crazy ideas for you so you can keep trying new things for yeah, us. That's what you, that's what y'all have to do. You have to tell me what to do. You okay? Yeah. You sure? Just, it burnt. It's hot. Yeah, I know. The hot glue gun is hot. Yeah, well, it's got a uh, ABS tip so you don't get burnt except for on the very end. Is that what you touched? I don't know. I yeah. think that might be glue. Still Yikes. Stuck on there. Yikes. All right, so those are my bags. I think it's fun. Try it out if you have some cloth, some drop cloth um, and decoupage paper. I think try it out. I think it's a lot of fun. And like this, so the only thing to it is that it, this is definitely a project that you can um, start it and then kind of walk away and then come back to because you really want your drop cloth to dry. And once it is all the way dry, it gets stiffer like this. But again, it's still workable. So this is wet and this is dry. But they both, to me, look really good. And my frame is still wet. So we're going to pretend that I didn't paint that frame and I'm going to grab the other frame. <laughs> Karen at... said, May May is making sweatshirts. Not making, but decorating. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tina says she's going to have to try it. And then Karen said, and she copied you, so just saying. Ooh. I wonder what it copied you how. When she made those bunnies. I made oh. bunnies and then she made bunnies. She oh, now, said, it's, now it's going to be cows? Yeah, she, she said I don't own the exclusive rights yeah, to bunnies. Yeah, I remember bunnies. that. That's yeah. funny. Okay, so I really don't want to work with this one because it's still wet, so let's work with this one that's already dry. Like I said, these are frames that have no back or no glass, and I don't like putting paper in a frame or something like that that doesn't have a glass because it's not protected. I feel like it just needs the glass. But for this, the drop cloth, I think it just makes it look like canvas. So um, when my frame doesn't have a back, I just like to use foam board and cut it to the size. And I should be able to put this one in here because I think they were all the same size. Yeah, all those were the same size. Okay. Natalie said you can make a stack of cards, wrap them in tissue paper, and put them in that cute bag as a gift. <sighs> yes. And yes, then Gina's Junk said, hi, y'all. 
Hi. Ah, oh, Miss Dina. It took yeah. me a second. Yeah, it did take me a second. So, like I said, I just like to use that, um, the foam board. And I kind of like black because it just looks Is that what it is? Finished. I thought yeah, it was cardboard. it's just foam board. Oh. Yeah. Um, and then it's in there. But it looks like... So what I would do is... Um, what I would do is use art glitter glue and attach this drop cloth to my foam board and then put my art in there so that way it's nice and even. I wouldn't use hot glue gun, the hot glue gun because it burned me. <laughs> I wouldn't use the hot glue gun um, because that can leave a hot glue line, yep. you know? And I wouldn't mod podge this fabric to the foam board simply because the foam board can get wavy with the mod podge yep. when it wets. So in order to keep the foam board and make it look nice and look professional on this end, um, what I would use is the art glitter glue and I would just pour the art glitter glue on there and then glue my drop cloth to the foam board. And then you have an Easter picture and then when Easter is over and you still want to use this frame, you pop it out, you get another foam board and you get another out. image. I'm not going to push it in there because it's still wet and I'm trying not to mess it up. And you haven't trimmed it all the way And yet. I haven't, no. So I'm just going to see if I can give you that gist of it without it. Let's see. Let me do it the right way. What I like to do is just put it on my foam board. Put it on. And pan basically pinching it. Yeah. Kind of pinch it in Pinch there. it on there. Yeah. Like pop it in. And then you've got a new wall decor yep. for the season. Let's take this and turn it that way so the glare the is not glare so strong. On it. There you go. Yeah, so pretend that I didn't paint that frame. The disaster of the frames, which I can fix it easily. But that's what... I think it's a good idea to, and then if you, you know, even if you did have a frame with glass, any picture frame, if you wanted to, you could leave the glass on there or you could take the glass out. And then it just has that more of a, like a canvas art picture yep. versus, I'm going to get this out before it dries. We're going to let that one dry. It just has a canvas art picture and then you can change it out for the seasons. Um, and as long as you're not attaching your... Um, image to the picture as long as you're just putting it in there and then hanging it up it works yeah it does and then foam board well, is pretty cheap quick. yeah foam board is cheap you can get that at Walmart for nothing it's really cheap I think you bought a bunch of it this time didn't you mm -hmm. I always buy foam board for projects like this because I always have frames that have no backer or they have are like even smaller picture frames that you know where they put that cardboard slice in the yeah. middle that that keeps the front the photo from um, moving around and stuff i just cut slices of the foam board and then use that so there's my art which actually looks really good in this frame like it is but i would paint the frame that's just because i just paint frames karen said that looks so good donna said great idea Tina says, I like the bunny in that frame. I, Karen said, really you know, that's a lot easier to store than a pile of picture frames for seasonal things. It is, because like, okay, you can Easter, you can summer. And you saw we had the Easter bunny rolled up just a while ago, yeah. like he was a scroll. You Well, once you glue it to, if you glue it to the foam board, then you're just storing the, the foam board. You, you're not going to take that off. But, you know, even if you didn't have to, even if you got it to lay pretty flat in there. Lorna said, that's pretty fancy cows. You could do Christmas. Donna said, that was put on drop cloth, question mark. Drop yep. cloth. Just a fabric that's drop cloth. No not, painting, no nothing. No, I didn't do a white background or nothing. Just glued I some decoupage paper on it and called it a day. That I just mosh podged it on there. But now if you were wanting it to be brighter, if you were wanting it to be a little bit more vibrant than what it yeah. is, then you could always put paint your drop cloth white. 
are, you know, the reason why I did the drop cloth is because the drop cloth has texture. And it's got that vintage look. Yeah, it does. Which is why she didn't go with white. Yeah. And then my bunny. And all of that's decoupage paper that's mod podged onto those drop cloth bags that Missy just made. Yep, and that's decoupage paper. This is Lisa. It was matte mod podge. That's yes. the, what. That's what. That's the only one we'll use. Yep. Drop cloth matte. and um, mod podge and the decoupage papers is which the cows are March's decoupage of the month club, but everything else the bunnies and the um, this bunny, those are available. Those are online right now, right? Yep. Yeah. The bunnies came out for everybody on February the 10th. And the rabbits, the Easter ones, the came Easter out ones for out. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. The Easter ones are available. This is just the bunny. Um, this is March's decoupage of the month and the cows and everything else that's in here. So, yep. yeah, drop cloth, Mod Podge, bam, project. No sew bags. Yeah, no sew. No so, sew bags. If Hot you missed glue. that, she put that bag together the very first of the video right after showing the decoupage month papers. I just glue it and then flip it inside out. That's it. That's it. And then, I mean, if you're a sewer or if you are better at the bag things, I mean, you could probably do all all, all kinds of stuff. But yeah, most definitely. Yeah, this is just... And then I use that um, twine that has the wire in it so that way it can be bendable. See, I think something like this would be cute on as a door hanger. Yeah. Fill it up with florals and stuff like that. I like Tina's Tina's there. idea though. The the, the Easter, Easter basket baskets? thing. Yeah, that's yeah. a great idea. I think it's a great idea too. And if you were gonna put any weight in it, it won't take it won't take you but a second to sew that drop cloth with the sewing machine. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think even I could do that. And I can't sew very well at all. My biggest tip, though, my biggest, biggest tip is that once it's completely dry, once your Mod Podge and your fabric is completely dry, go over it with the iron. Put a piece of parchment paper in ba back in the inside of your bag. Take your iron, um, lay a piece of uh, parchment paper on top of that, and then just go over it with the iron just to make sure that your image is securely um, glued to your bag. So that way you can, you know, bend it, move it, or anything like that, and you don't have to worry about um, your paper ripping or anything like that. You could even distress it if you wanted to. You know, you could go over it lightly with sandpaper if you were wanting to distress it to make it look more old. But um, I didn't do it. But, yeah, this one needs to be ironed on after it's all the way dry. Um, and then the paper... Stiffens up the bag, so this image right here will be stiff, like this part will be stiff, but it's still movable. And then it works for the frames. I think it's a really cool way to reuse picture frames. Gina says, so creative. Love the Easter Bunny. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So parchment paper in front of the image and behind the image? Yeah, I would say that just because what you're wanting to do is, because when you... When that you, way your glue doesn't bleed through to the next well, layer. Well, yeah, when you're ironing, you're going to heat up the glue. And you don't want it to go through. So I would put my parchment paper there, fold it over here, and then iron. That's what I would do. And I just, I have that little Cricut iron, but if you have just a regular one, I'm just on the cot, cotton setting. So you're high just, heat. High heat, yeah, you're just wanting to go over it. Um, and you're just going to make sure that all of this is um, secure down to your paper. And then you just pull your center paper out and then you're good to go. You use parchment paper, not wax paper. Don't get them confused. Yep. Parchment paper, not wax paper. Wax paper is what you use if you're gluing something down on the, on your surface and you don't want the glue getting all the way through. You don't want that. You don't want to heat the wax paper up and make a mess yeah. on your stuff. But yeah, just putting the parchment paper in between just just secures that you're not going to heat activate that um, Mod Podge to the back side of your fabric um, to the other side of it and then of course it protects your front so that way you're not getting anything on your iron you just go over it for a second make sure that it's all nice and on there and it's ready to go after that Lisa said I have loved watching this oh, I learned a lot you. thank you thank you thank you I'm so glad sometimes I feel like I'm like I don't know if I did anything <laughs> 
Karen, just, here, Karen said, you guys are so creative. Thanks for sharing all the great ideas. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Y'all are sweet. Are do you, do you have nice. a preview of what we're going to be doing Friday? Or we we may not be able to go live Friday. Okay, Friday is the first of the month for us. And then um, we're kind of... We're kind of trying to figure it out. We um, Friday, the first of the month at the store can be very, very hectic. That's when we pay out our vendors and cut checks um, and get the new month started. And, you know, the system does its thing where it starts all over for the new month and everybody gets, it's just really hectic. Um, and this this Friday falls on the first and, and yep. we usually go live at 11. I don't think that we're going to be able to pull off um, getting everything done and and being back here by 11 so we'll we'll know for certain if we're going to be able to go live or not thursday so um if i'm we, going to try to get it done thursday night yeah if is we, what i'm going to try to do if we can't go live friday um rodney will post and let y'all know but if i can go live friday i have two pieces of furniture prepped up ready to go waiting for a paint job so I would love to um, paint those with y'all if I can do it, possibly Friday. But again, first of the month at Rusty Acrylics can be a little bit of a madhouse. Yep. Uh, as far as the for several and, reasons. Yeah. yeah the, on our end, as far as that goes, so uh, I think we probably probably won't go live Friday. Um, but if we don't go live Friday, um, we definitely see you guys next Tuesday for sure. Yeah, and at the at the minimum, we'll release a video this week that just shows the uh, decoupage of month club for anybody that's gonna miss it or anybody that missed tonight. Yeah, yeah. Since we actually used two pieces on what we were doing. Oh yeah, the money cows and the sheep. I think the sheep is so cute. Lisa, I think we have a crop of. I think that's what I got from May May was a crop of thou. Mm -hmm. I think so too. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I think that would have easily worked. I'm punching the holes through this and putting my wire through there. It would have been fine. Ooh, and I could make a messy bow and put on there, like for the Easter basket. And oh stuff yeah, like that's that. right. I the, I think that this is just the basics. I think you could do a lot of different things with it. I think you could add your own touch. Make it bigger. I think you could make, make it, it bigger. Smaller. Yeah. I think you could use them for all kinds of different things. I think they would be cute. If you made your bag big enough and you know how you have to store toilet paper or something like that. Yeah. They could go in the bathroom. I think they would be really cute and store stuff in it. Maybe we should try sewing one. I just <laughs> See that face, y'all? We have, a, we have a, a basic sewing machine that's yeah. made for stuff like this. Simple stuff. Um, Meme, sew me some bags. <laughs> May May ain't got time to sew you any bags. She's bag. busy working on her stuff, her shirt, her uh, decorating her shirts. Yeah, this is gonna look good, especially when you get it ironed down. Yeah, I think so too. I think that's all I got. If y'all got any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. But I think that's it. Donna said, "Don't worry if you can't go live. We'll look forward to when you can show us more." Yeah, yeah. I, ju I just oh. we were hoping that we can. I should. I'm going to try my best to get everything we'll done. We'll see. Thursday yeah, night. we'll for, we'll for sure see. I mean, I would like to try. For sure, I hate to get off schedule. I like it when we have a yeah, schedule. Th that's yeah, and we we're not good at getting back on schedule when we get off schedule. When we derail, yeah, it's like ah, how do you get back that way? <laughs> Either which way. May May said, I think hot glue rocks. I did an entire bedroom makeover with just hot glue only. No sewing. There you go. See? It does. I mean, it works. It works great because that bag looks good. Yeah. I thought it turned out awesome. Yeah. But what I really want to do is I want to make these like roll up scrolls with these. With the, uh, when we make one, we're going to show it to you because it's going to be cool. Because I have an idea in my head of what, what, what I want us to do. So. I hope my idea matches with what Missy's want to do. Because if it doesn't, then it won't get done. Lorna said, life happens. Life happens. Yep. All right, guys. I think that's it for today. That's all I if got. Nobody's got any if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask us on Facebook or send us an email. It's admin at rustyrelics.com. Yep. It's faster if you just message us on Facebook, though, I'll be honest. Our web form on our website is a lot slower uh, used to it was pretty quick, but it was uh, 
bombarding my phone with bots. So I had to turn that off and then it went back to being regular stuff. Yeah, but if you have any questions, just message us on Facebook. If you are new tonight and you haven't watched us on Facebook or seen our Facebook page, be sure you hop on our Facebook page because we have over 70 vendors in the store that sell all kinds of stuff. And today was National Retro Day. So, um, I so she I did was, a whole bunch of Facebook posting. Dedicate my post to the natural uh, National Retro Day stuff. Um, but it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun going through the store and looking for those kinds of stuff. And, I liked it, but um, National yeah. Retro Day. National Retro Day. That's what it said. That's what Facebook told me yesterday that today was. So I thought that was fun. Don't forget to like the video if yeah. you haven't already. If you haven't already, hit if that you haven't thumbs subscribed, up. make sure you subscribe to our channel. Right, and hit that notification bell if you don't want to miss the next video. Other than that, y'all have a great night, and we will see y'all later. Bye guys. Bye guys. Thanks for watching.